Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So today I've got a practice question. This is related to the metabolic and endocrine systems, all about differential diagnosis. But before we get to that, just a quick reminder, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com for all of the courses, content, and material you need in order to dominate on test day. You can get all of our freebies, still have some freebies going on. Uh, you're able to get some free study help, some cheat sheets. You can find all of that at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast, all totally free to help you in your journey as you get ready for and pass the NPTE. So as we get started today, just a quick reminder about the content outline. So as you know, in this podcast, we're going through all of the FSBPT's content outline. And now today, certainly no different. We are in the metabolic and endocrine systems. This has somewhere between four and six questions in it. So it's really not that huge of a section, but it does have differential diagnosis and interventions, which we have addressed some in the past. And so certainly we will continue to do so as we go through this podcast. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into our practice question for today. Here we go. A patient with diabetes insipidus is most likely to experience which of the following clinical symptoms? A patient with diabetes insipidus is most likely to experience which of the following clinical symptoms? One, bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, blurred vision, irritability. Two, dysuria, hyperglycemia, recurring bladder infections. Three, ketonuria, glycosuria, slow healing cuts and bruises. And four, polyuria, dehydration, increased serum sodium. So again, we've got a patient with diabetes insipidus, most likely to experience which of the following clinical symptoms? We've got one, bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, blurred vision and irritability. Two, dysuria, hyperglycemia, recurring bladder infections. Three, ketonuria, glycosuria, and slow healing cuts and bruises. And four, polyuria, dehydration, and increased serum sodium. So this is one of those questions, it can be a little bit of annoying, annoying on test day, a bit of an annoyance, in that they have groupings of, of symptoms listed here. So in a sense, you are trying to look at all three of the items contained in each of the answer options to make sure that you've identified uh, which ones are partially correct, totally, totally correct. And this is where there's a kind of one of the little the hints or the ways to help you identify or look at questions like this that have the list style questions, or sorry, list style answers, is you look to see if there's anything that's incorrect at all in the list, and that if it's partially incorrect, that means that that item is then totally incorrect. So again, you're trying to parse through, here we've got four options with three symptoms each, and so therefore this leads to the, you know, you've got 12, you've got to parse through 12 different signs and symptoms in order to identify what is precisely going on here. So first of all, let's start with just the definition of diabetes insipidus. So diabetes insipidus, this is an antidiuretic hormone issue, meaning that the patient is not, one of two options, either they're not producing ADH, or it's also called vasopressin, but they're either not producing antidiuretic hormone or they are producing it, but the kidney is not receiving it. Regardless of which one it is, whether it's the production or reception of the antidiuretic hormone, what eventually this leads to is you have vast quantities of urine production because the kidney fails to resorb water back into the systems. Because if you recall from, uh, let's see, this would be your exercise phys or anatomy and physiology classes, that water has to be filtered. Really, everything gets filtered through the kidneys. Then the kidneys have to pick what it's going to put back into the bloodstream. And again, that's an, a terribly simplistic definition or description of what's happening at the kidneys. But essentially, you have to resorb water and nutrients back into the bloodstream so that you keep the proper proper ratios of everything. And so what, go, what, what goes wrong with the lack of antidiuretic hormone or ADH, the lack of that, eventually what happens is that the kidneys just start really flushing all the water out of the system. So uh, the correct answer here is polyuria, dehydration, and increased serum sodium. So polyuria meaning frequent and large quantities of urine. If I'm not mistaken, the normal anatomical production of urine is somewhere between three, one and three quarts a day, whereas someone with diabetes insipidus will create up to 20 quarts of urine each day. 
And so it's a huge increase from the normal, which leads to dehydration. Obviously, you're, you're peeing out that much water. It can lead to dehydration. Uh, the patients will also have polydipsia. That's a fun way of describing increased thirst. And that, that makes a lot of sense because you're peeing everything out. You have dehydration. You will have increased thirst. So polydipsia. You'll have nocturia. Uh, just again, vast quantities of pale dilute urine. And then increased serum sodium. What that means is that if you get rid of all of the water, then that means that you have retained, you are essentially increasing the concentration of sodium in the bloodstream. So you, you get this increased serum sodium levels uh, simply because you are, you know, you've gotten rid of all the water and so everything starts to, to really aggregate in the system. So, and again, part of that too is, is the mechanism in the kidney. So uh, again, trying to create a very, very simplistic view of what's going on here. But the bottom line is that you get polyuria, dehydration, increased serum sodium, uh, let's see, decreased urine specific gravity, just meaning that it, it doesn't have very much in it. It's mostly water. Um, fatigue, irritability, a lot of that's because of the nocturia. If you consider that a patient is, you know, if you're peeing 20 quarts of urine each day, you're doing that like every hour, a huge quantity of urine. It, it's just, it, it becomes intolerable for the patient to become quite fatigued because they're not sleeping or resting very well. And so again, the correct answer here, patient with diabetes insipidus is most likely to present with polyuria, dehydration, and increased serum sodium. Now, looking at these other answer options, all of the other answer options describe the symptoms, uh, signs and symptoms of diabetes mellitus. So if you consider diabetes mellitus, that is a glucose issue. And so uh, looking at these answer options, bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, blurred vision, and irritability. The carpal tunnel syndrome that's related to myxedema or the increased fluid load that really you get all that blood sugar that is aggregating in the system, which tends to, re I mean, you're not retaining a ton of water, but your body's trying to pee it all out, but there's just, there's still too much. And so you can get what's called myxedema or this increase in swelling in the carpal tunnels and the tarsal tunnels, uh, blurred vision, irritability, so the blurred vision that's related to the neuropathy that occurs and irritability, again, related to the disruption in blood glucose, either too high or too low, which, which makes the patient not feel very well. Dysuria, hyperglycemia, and recurring bladder infections, this would be related to the increased quantity of, of blood glucose that starts going out in the urine. So you have glu glycosuria. Glycosuria is where you have blood, or you have glucose in the urine, which that's a great, great medium for bacteria. So that, thus you get lots of recurring bladder infections, uh, hyperglycemia related to the, the, glyce or the glucose in the bloodstream, uh, ketone urea, so ketone bodies in the urine as well, uh, indicating that you are in ketoacidosis or the starting of ketoacidosis, uh, slow healing cuts and bruises that's related to the destruction of capillary systems, which will result in uh, just the same as what we'd expect in uh, someone who has a diabetic neuropathic ulcer or a diabetic neuropathic wound. The reason that shows up is because you have extremely poor wound healing. And so all that to say that these other symptoms, bilateral carpal tunnel syndrome, uh, blurred vision, irritability, dysuria, hyperglycemia, recurring bladder infections, ketone urea, glycosuria, and slow healing cuts and bruises, all of those are symptoms of diabetes mellitus. And so this question asking primarily about diabetes insipidus and the key with diabetes insipidus is the vast quantities or the increased quantities of, of pale dilute urine. Again, normal production is about three quarts a day and these folks are producing up to 20 quarts a day. So, and again, it's all related to the antidiuretic hormone produced in the hypothalamus and then distributed via the pituitary gland. And so therefore, if you have a production problem, so this could be from like a brain injury, concussion, you could have it from some type of meningitis or a brain infection that could disrupt it. So either trauma, surgery, uh, or some type of infectious process can disrupt the ADH production. And then on the other end, you can have a reception issue where the kidney is not receiving it properly. Uh, again, these are all potential conditions that could cause diabetes insipidus. And again, the point of diabetes insipidus, it's not a blood glucose issue, rather it's a blood volume issue. And so these folks are also extremely prone to, to develop orthostatic hypotension, just because if you're, again, if you don't have very much fluid, then you're clearly going to have decreased, uh, or you'll have what's called hypovolemia, decreased blood volume, which again will result in the orthostatic hypotension. 
And perhaps that's maybe one of the reasons they start seeing you in the first place is they have, uh, they just keep falling over because of the orthostatic hypotension. So that's a potential scenario that you could see on test day. All right, so with that, we'll bring today to a conclusion. Again, diabetes insipidus versus diabetes mellitus. This would be a great question on test day, asking you to do some differential diagnosis. If you haven't yet, please just take a moment. It only takes like two seconds. Uh, go over to wherever you're listening to this podcast, Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify. Uh, just hit the review button. It helps so much if you leave us a five-star review as we're trying to get the word out. Uh, don't forget, this is the last, just last couple days. If you want to join us in Chicago for our free on-campus event, again, the the course is free, the hotel is free, the meals are free, everything's free. You just got to get yourself to Chicago. Be sure to check that all out. You can find that at ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. That's the easiest way to sign up. So, all right, with that, we'll bring it to a conclusion. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Keep a grin on your chin. And remember that this is worth, this is worth doing. This is something, a, a great intersection of your interest and your skill. And uh, yeah, I just commend you for your efforts as you go through this. So thank you, everyone. Talk to you soon. Catch you in the next, next episode. Have a great day.